Okay, that means we have to start all over. <laughs> Running back. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me grab my. There it is. Okay. We're back on here. Let's see. Uh, learn to thank God for making his uh, his demands known. This is, demands are strong, but, you know, amen. We have to learn to thank God for making what he wants of us known to us. Uh, amen. Our little, I am always, our little, I am, always sulks and pouts when God says do. Let your little I am be shriveled up in God's wrath and indignation. I am who I am has sent me to you, says in Exodus 3, 14. Is he, he must dominate. Isn't it piercing to realize that God not only knows where we are, but also knows the gutters in which we crawl? He will hunt us down as fast as a flash of lightning. No human being, uh, no... No human being knows human beings as God does. Oh, amen. So, you know, he, he's saying, look, he's uh, we want to be in charge. Amen. Let's just be real. We want to be in charge. I am. That's me. I am. Me, 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 me. Uh, amen. What? And he says, we have to let that little I am die. We have to let that, that that want to be in charge die. We have to let it go. Amen. We have to Amen. let it go because that's what's Amen. keeping us. That's what's keeping us out of, out of where God has for us is that want to be in charge ourselves, is that want to be little gods. That was the mess up from Adam in the garden. Oh, he said, he said that the, the serpent came up and said, look, God knows that if you eat this, you'll be like him as little gods. I'm embellishing that a little bit, but that's what he said. You'll be as God. You'll be your own God. And we want to be our own God. I mean, you know, amen. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so hard for us to submit. It's so hard for us to surrender because we want to be in charge. But once we come to that understanding that, um, you know what, there's there's someone that's a little bit more uh, more powerful than me. There's someone that knows a little bit more than I do. Uh, amen. 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 Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry for that little bug out. I don't know what happened there. I don't know. I don't know. So I guess we'll just kind of move on. Amen. Looks like we lost a couple of people. But uh Amen. Maybe they'll come back. Maybe yeah. they'll come back. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going in uh in in our study of the tabernacle. Um amen. And tonight we're gonna start on mm -hmm. the of incense. Amen. Um uh, in the tabernacle. Um and, and I really like this particular picture because it shows the altar of incense right before the the veil. Yeah, I like that. A amen. And it shows the priest ministering over that altar of incense. A amen. Um, mm -hmm. Ministering to God. Because remember, the priest never ministered to people. The priest only ministered to God. And you are a priest. The Bible says you're kings and priests. We're all kings and priests. Little king, little priest. Our priestly were to minister, were to minister unto the Lord. You know, every one of us are priests in our home. Every yeah. one of us. I'm yeah. a priest in my home. You're a priest in your home. It, it, as the priest in my home, there was a time um there was a time when I came back to the Lord after after a span of time that I was backslid. There was a time that I came back to the Lord, and it was and it was my response. It wasn't my pastor's responsibility. It wasn't anybody else's response. It was my responsibility to begin to show Jesus to my family. 
Amen. Amen. Now Amen. I consider myself brand new in the Lord, even though I, I I I was had some years behind me before I backslid. I still backslid. When I came back, I still considered myself brand new. I kind of starting fresh all over again. Um, amen. But it was still my responsibility to show Jesus to my family. And the only way I can show Jesus to my family isn't to go around and tell them, oh, you know, you got to get saved. You got to stop sinning. You got to. That's not showing them Jesus. But the only way I'm going to show them Jesus is by worshiping God, is by seeking after God. That's why I like this picture, because you see the priest, you see the priest. Here, we're going to bring it up again. You see the priest, and his only focus is, is on that altar. His only focus is is on is on that is is serving that all. Are you are, do you see this thing? That's his only focus. And when our focus is is on serving God, when our focus is on is on worshiping God, when our focus, when my focus is set right before God, then those in my home will see it. And at the very least, they're going to say something's up with Dad. He got some bad shrooms or something. A a amen. A something's a up. something's up with Pop. Are you are you hearing this? Thing? And yes, Lord. And it's the same thing with you. You you say, well, amen. you know, I'm not the priest. Of my yes, you are the priest in your home, even if you know. You it, does, it doesn't matter. Everyone is a priest. My wife is also a priest in our home. A amen. So amen. we're both priests in our home. And and I see the Lord in her more than she will no more than she does in her. A amen. Um are, are you hearing this thing? And and that helps me keep myself focused and grounded by seeing the Lord in her. <laughs> Because she keeps yeah, focused right. on the Lord, I can see that. I can see what it does in her. I can see her becoming more like Him. Are you Are you hearing this thing? And that helps me stay grounded. That helps me stay focused as well. And I think vice Man. versa. She can see and and helps her. Amen. And that's the whole purpose of being a priest. Being a priest doesn't mean you're going around telling everybody what to do. No, you're Amen. working on you're, you're working on your relationship, but you're not hiding it from anybody. You're not hiding it from anybody. I've served God. I, one of the things I did when I came back to the Lord is I I, I said I sat down. I said, "Look, I'm going back to church. Uh, you all come if you want to. Um, if you don't want to, that's okay too. But I'm going. This is where I'm doing. This is where I'm doing. Um, Amen." And that lasted about a week, and then I was like, "All right, everybody, load up, right?" So, <laughs> um, Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. So let, let's just let's just let's just move on. See this altar, uh, the altar of incense in Exodus chapter thirty, verse one. It says, "And now I shall make me an alt an altar to burn incense upon of shittim wood. Uh, shalt thou make it?" Uh, there were two altars in the tabernacle of Moses. There was the brazen altar for the burnt offering, and that was located in the outer court at the door of the tabernacle. So it was located right on the entrance of the tabernacle. Um, amen. And then and then the altar of incense was for burning incense, and it was positioned in the holy place before the veil. So you have one altar that was placed on the outside, and it was next to the entrance of, of, the, of the outer court. And then you have the other altar that was placed on the inside and it was right at the entrance to the holy of holies are you are you in this thing do, do you uh, amen let's amen. just keep, let's just keep going in exodus 30 verse 1 it says to burn incense upon incense all week speaks to us of the prayers and intercession of the saints which ascend unto god always anytime the bible talks about incense he's talking about your prayer Oh, in Psalm uh, 141, it says, excuse me, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. 
Amen. So lifting our hands and and praying is is something that is that is absolutely essential that we do. It's 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 not it's not that we're commanded you have to do, do but but it's the lifting of your hands is an act of surrender and the praying you have to communicate. You have to communicate with your father that that prayer that goes up. It's a sweet smelling incense that goes up before the Lord, and He smells that. Amen. Um, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but He smells that prayer. It, 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 we're gonna we're gonna look more into it as we go. Let me not get ahead of myself. Um, amen. I know that uh, I know that uh, you know Grandma wanted me to get ahead of myself, but I'm just not gonna do it, Grandma. I'm sorry. Are you still here? Yes. yes. So I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to get out of myself. Um, amen. So the altar of incense, incense begins on the altar with man. And as it burns, it ascends upward to God. Likewise, our prayers start in the heart of man and ascend heavenward to God. So the incense began on the altar, and it was... Uh, it, it began with fire, with burning of the incense. Anybody ever get burned? You know, it hurts to get burned. Oh, yeah. uh, amen. It hurt. So the incense began with fire on the altar, and, and it became a sweet aroma. Likewise, our prayers start in the heart, start in your heart of man. Let me, let me make that. Let me, let me make this. Uh, let me make this mankind. There. Start in the heart of mankind. Um, amen. Amen. That way we're not sexist on this. It's everybody. Amen. The burning of incense has significance when seen in relationship to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 7.25, it says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So when we look at the when we look at the at the altar of incense, the incense is actually it's prayer. The incense is intercession. We see that Christ is always making intercession for you and me. He's able to bring us into him. He's able to keep us even when we try not to be kept. How many people have tried not to be kept? Maybe not, you know, not set out so oh, I'm not going to be kept. But but you know, we 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 mess up and we start going down the wrong road. Come on, anybody ever talk to the flesh a little bit? Um kind of kind of go on that road. A amen. Um okay. so we're we're not saying maybe with our mind, maybe with our with our cognitive uh 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 understanding that we're trying not to be kept, but what we're what we're doing is we're trying not to be kept. We're trying to be our own little gods. We're trying to be the I am. Uh, amen. By going down this other road, and, and the Bible says that Jesus is able to keep us from falling. He's able to keep us. He's able to keep us in all that because He forever makes intercession for you and I. You're a saint. Come on, say I'm a saint. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Really? We're saints. You know the Bible is. You know I don't oh. care what the Catholic Church says. Catholic Church says you got to be dead for so many years and have done so many miracles and all that to be. Ah, eh, stop it. Um, that's not what the Bible says. The, Bi the Bible says, uh, you know, the Bible says we're all saints. Uh, read, pa read Paul's writings. In, in, in all of Paul's writings, he says to the saints at Ephesus, to the saints at Corinth, to this. Uh, amen. He wasn't. Amen. We're all saints. Amen. We're 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 no longer sinners. I want to hear anybody say I'm a sinner. You were a sinner. And you got saved by grace, now you're a saint. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So to claim that you're still a sinner is a slap in God's face. It's saying God's not able to make you into the saint that he says you are. Uh, mm. Did I mean to go there? I guess wow. so. I guess so. Amen. So the altar of incense, Christ appeared before the throne of God on our behalf or in our behalf. On our behalf. I'll learn how to write one day. Uh, 
what a comforting thought to know that we have him pleading our case. Oh, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be awesome to just to just be settled in that? To be settled in Christ as has he's he's got our he's pleading our case before God. Just to be settled in that. But too many times we we have these issues that we want that we want to bring up. We too many times we 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 see things with our eyes and we believe them more than we believe God. We see issues we have with ourselves. We see our own weaknesses. We see our downfalls. We see these things. Maybe we see the downfall in someone else. Um, a- amen. A- and we'll start to point a finger. Well, that's a downfall in you. If you're pointing a finger at the downfall of someone else, then mm-hmm. you could turn that around yes. and look at you. Yes. So, yes, am I looking at other people? The only reason I'm looking at other people is because I'm too ashamed to look at myself. Pick Uh-oh. the moat from your own eye. Pick the moat from your own eye. That's right. That's right. Get that log at your own eye for you. Look, you're going to try to get a splinter out of your brother. A- amen. 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 So we shouldn't be. Amen. Let, let me just let me just kind of cruise. That wasn't the lesson. Hallelujah. Amen. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit can also be seen in connection with the incense. The Holy Spirit makes intercession in us according to the will of God. In Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Wait a minute. Let's go back up here to this other kind of crazy statement. The Holy Spirit makes intercession in us. Let's talk about that for a minute. Because it's not just that, you know, Jesus makes intercession for us. He's in heaven at the right hand of the Father. Holy Spirit is in you, and Holy Spirit's making intercession in you. Through you. When you pray in the Spirit, you're praying a perfect prayer. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. He's making intercession in you. But we have to be we have to be submitted. We have to be, we have to understand that we're not in charge. I'm not in charge of this thing. God is in charge of this thing. So don't be mad at me. You know, like I've told people they, they don't like uh, they don't like the word of God. I, well, don't be mad at me. Talk to God. Well, I think I should say this. Well, talk to the author. Um, I can't rewrite. Amen. I don't have that kind of authority. All I can do is tell you what it says. That's it, really. Um, amen. So the Holy Spirit makes intercession in you, while Jesus makes intercession for you. So both Holy Spirit and Jesus are making intercession. Oh, wait a minute. And, and the Bible also says, oh, let's let's talk about this for a minute. I, I didn't put this in there, but let me just tell you about it. Uh, the Bible also says that creation is groaning. Yeah, All yeah, of yeah. creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm-hmm. All of creation is groaning, interceding, crying out on your behalf for you to be mature. The, the Bible, the Bible it says it says all of creation is groaning for the manifestation. That means the, the outward showing. Of the sons of God, that word "sons" is the word "wehot," and in in, a, in English we only have one word for sons, and it means and it's sons, and it means son, right? Um, but in 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 the Greek there are several different words, and it describes where they are. And the wehot is the fully grown, matured son. You've got Napion, which is a little baby, and Technon, a- amen, and, and and different ones as as you grow, um, a- amen. But the wehot is the fully grown, matured son ready to take on the family business. That's what that wee house means. Amen. That's what he's trying to get us. I'm sorry? That's That's what he's trying to get us. Exactly. That's what he's trying to get us. That's that's where where creation is crying out for your maturity. They're not crying out for you to be born again. They're crying out because you're born again. They're crying out for your maturity. Because creation... 
<laughs> creation is subject to futility. The Bible says creation is subject to futility, not because of anything the creation did, but because of what you and I did. Because sin came in the world, now creation is subject to decay just right along with everyone else. So creation is crying out for your maturity. Creation is crying out for you to be grown up. Creation is crying out for you to walk in the place that God has called you to walk so that it doesn't have to suffer destruction anymore. So they need to come on. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. I, this, I'm going to run around now. Just a second. Okay, I ran around in a small place, so I ran around. Amen. Um, Amen. Amen. That's so good. We've, got, we've got not only do we have Jesus praying for us, we've got Jesus, we got Jesus inter interceding on our behalf based on our action. I shouldn't say based on our action, but because of our action. Because you know, we messed up. So he's the little father, that's under the blood. That's under the blood, Lord. Don't don't punish him for that. I'm covering that. Right? I'm covering that. So Jesus is interceding on our behalf. Holy Spirit is interceding in us so that he can he can begin to bring that maturity. And then creation all around us, the trees out in your yard, they're crying out for you. They're praying for you. Oh, your 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 pet, your pet turtle is praying for you. All of creation is crying out. The groaning for the manifestation that's the uh, of the sons of God. Of the sons of God. Yeah. For Hallelujah. The fully, the fully grown, the we house, the sons of God. They're praying for your maturity. So we've got creation. We've got Holy Spirit, who's the governor of the church. And we've got Jesus, who's, who's the Lord of all, um, all praying for us, all interceding for us. This is the ministry of the altar. The ministry of the of the golden altar is the ministry of prayer. Is the ministry uh, the ministry of intercession? Are you hearing this? Yeah. Thing? Yes. Are you hearing this? Hallelujah. Thing? Hallelujah. So, who is it that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Yes. So Christ isn't condemning you. He's making intercession on your behalf. He's saying, God, I died for that guy. The devil's going up, coming up and saying, oh, did you just hear what he thought? Did you just did you just see what he did? Oh, and 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 Jesus is saying, Yeah, but that's under the blood. Oh, he's make he's making intercession for you. In this, we see that the golden altar is significant of Jesus Christ in his ministry of prayer and intercession for us and of the prayer and intercession of Holy Spirit in the church. I'm going to have to revise this to include creation, too. I didn't include creation. Um, amen, but I'll revise it. Hallelujah. So, the the altar is is talking about Christ's uh, Christ's uh, uh, ministry, Amen. Uh, the Bible says that the shittim wood, uh, thou shalt make it, a Amen. So it's going to be made of that of that acacia tree, of that acacia wood. And in our study, we we've already looked at this wood, and we already know that it speaks not only of humanity, but of His incorruptible and sinless humanity, because the acacia tree. Was a specific was a well particularly dense tree, and it uh, it didn't it didn't allow moisture in as you know outside moisture it didn't allow outside moisture in uh, amen and anybody that's ever had any wooden furniture that got real wet knows that when moisture gets into the wood that's the end of the wood it it, it ruins the wood but this particular wood. 
didn't matter. You could get it when it wasn't, it wasn't, it was too dense. It didn't allow that moisture in. That's why it speaks of the incorruptibility of Christ. Because when Jesus came as a human being, he, he came here as a human being and he was incorruptible. Sin never entered. Matter of fact, he said that he said that Satan tempted me, but he found no place in me. Oh, mm. he found wow. no place in me. So Satan is going to come to you and I. He's going to come to each person. And, and, and in Christ, Jesus said that he found no place in me. So he didn't find any place, any, any strongholds. He didn't find any footholds. He didn't find any place where he could hide. He didn't find any place where he could make his way in. A amen. So that's an incorruptor. That water didn't, wasn't able to get inside of that tree. The water wasn't able to get inside of that wood. That's why it speaks of the incorruptibility of Christ. Amen. But now you're hidden in Christ. Oh, what? You're hidden in Christ. So if you're hidden in Christ, now this is also speaking of you. The word, uh, okay. Let me just, let me just, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm getting excited. I don't want to get too excited. Spit word. I don't get too excited. I get too excited. I go off on these rabbit trails. Amen. Then people get mad at me. It says a cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof, and the horns thereof shall be of the same. In other words, they're going to be in this in the square of the horns. Uh, there was a horn on each corner. Um, if we go back up here, boom. Um, you see the horn on each corner. Um, and it was it was a cubit wide, a cubit deep, and two cubits tall. What's a cubit? A uh, cubit's about 18 inches, roughly. Okay. Um, amen. So, and the horns were on each corner. So this is a square altar, just like the altar. Just like the altar outside was a square altar. Trying to find out where we were. Here we go. Uh, just like the altar outside, the the the, uh, the brazen altar was also a square altar, a little bit bigger, but it was a, it was also a square altar. Um, amen. Amen. So this is going to be a square altar. It's going to be about two cubits tall. And this altar, in relation to the other furniture, is the highest piece in the holy place. This speaks to the fact that Christ's ministry of intercession is His highest ministry. Now, on behalf of the church, so this being the highest, uh, this being did I raise my hand? Well, I think this machine thought I raised my hand. Let me put my hand down. How do I put my hand down? Lower my hand. There we go. So, 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 where was I? So, this altar was, was two cubits tall, the, the tallest up to this point was a table of showbread and it was one and a half cubits tall. So it's not particularly tall. Uh, 18, it should be about three feet tall, the altar, right? Um, amen. 18 and 18 is 36. That's three feet. So this speaks to it being the highest form of ministry that Jesus had in the holy place. Remember, this part is called the holy place. And we're going in another time to go into the Holy of Holies. Amen. Let me get back. So you said the altar incense is the is the uh, the high uh, the the uh, highest place. The altar yeah, it's a, incense. It's the tallest piece of furniture in the holy place. It was okay. two cubits tall. It was two cubits tall. Where the the next tallest piece of furniture. Was the uh, was the uh, the uh, table of showbread, which was one and a half cubits tall. Um, and we don't know how tall the lamp was because there's no dimensions on the lamp, and that's intentional because uh, you know there's no there's no limit to the illumination it can bring. You. There's no limit to the amount of revelation the Holy Spirit will bring to the church. That's powerful. Amen. So. 
of what we know is a measurement. This is the tallest part. And and like I said, it speaks it speaks to us um, that uh, that uh, the fact that Christ's ministry of intercession is his highest ministry now on behalf of the church. It's his highest ministry. If it's his highest ministry, don't you think it should be important to us? Yes, yes. Amen. Powerful. It should be important to us. Yes. So why are we in prayer? Come on. Come on. Well, if it's important to Jesus, and we're supposed to be like Jesus, I'm going to go off on a rant. If it's important to Jesus, if it's his most important ministry, and we're supposed to be like him, why aren't we in prayer? Come on. Do so I pray at home? Okay. So do I. But there's a corporate body. There's a corporate body that needs to pray. And, and you know, the Bible talks about in, uh, I think it's Isaiah, that the anointing is in the cluster. You don't take one grape and get a glass of wine out. I'm not condoning wine, but the Bible doesn't condemn it, so I won't either. Okay? You, you're going to get a glass of grape juice, not out of one grape, but out of a cluster of grapes. It takes the cluster getting together. It takes, it takes the, the body of Christ. You aren't the body. I'm not the body. Together, we make the body. That's good. Oh, amen. Amen. It's quiet in here. On why are you? Where are it's you? It's good word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get back over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I think we already talked about that. Okay. We sometimes wonder what God is calling us to do. And Romans 8 tells, uh, tells us that we are to be in his image tells us, tells us that we are to be in his image. The first thing we need to do is acknowledge that we are intercessors. I just talk, I, we, we just talked about this. Submit to the authority of Holy Spirit by actually joining in intercession with him. Everything else will flow from there. We have to submit to the authority of Holy Spirit and join in his intercession. And when we do that, everything else flows from there. You wonder who you were supposed to be. You wonder what you're supposed to do. You, you, you know, earlier we talked about the vision that God had put in you. Uh, amen. Some some of us are going, like, well, I don't know what that vision is, a vision, you know, I want it to be this or that or whatever. Uh, maybe we just, we just, I just don't know. <clears throat> well, you need to get into prayer because it's going to flow out of your intercession for others. I don't mean just get into prayer. Oh, Lord, show me what my my vision, show me what your vision for me is. Um, yeah, you can do that too. But until you get out of yourself, because when you're asking God to show you his vision for you, you're really focused on you. You're not focused on God. You're not focused on, on what he wants. Oh, it sounds good. Oh, Lord, what is your will for me? Uh, you're really, the real focus there is you. That's good. But when you come out of your focus for you, and remember, in the in the tabernacle, let me, let me see if I can get a picture real quick of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are you at? Where are you at, tabernacle? Tabernacle. This was a not planned thing. So there we go. Tabernacle. Do I have you in here? I do have you in here. Let me give you this one. Oh, that's too little. That's too little. You'll never be able to see it. So let's do this one. That's still too little. That one's better. Okay, let's do this one. So in the tabernacle, when we look at the tabernacle and the whole thing, see that whole tabernacle there? It, it, it shows... On the outer court, see all these people in the outer court? Yeah. 
Lots of people in the outer court. They're out. They're out here, and what they're doing is they're dealing with themselves. They're on the altar of on the brazen altar, they're putting their sin offering. They're dealing with their their failures. Okay, and then over here, they're 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 washing themselves by the water of the word. Amen. So they're so they're getting in the word. They're 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 learning how how they can can improve on themselves in the word. Amen. This is a me time. This out here, you're focused on me. Now look inside here. Look how nobody's in there. Nobody's in there. A amen. In here, when you come into this, is called the holy place. When you come into the holy place, your focus isn't on you anymore. You 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 passed you. That doesn't mean you're perfect. That doesn't mean you never messed up. That means your focus isn't on you anymore. Now your focus is on God. Now my focus is serving God. My focus is hearing from God. My focus is 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 is, is fellowship with God and with God's people. It's it, it's it's becoming uh, becoming one with God. This is what the focus is here. And then when you come inside here, the high priest would go in here once a year, right? Uh, you have you can go in there every day, but the high priest could only come in here once a year. And but when you come in here, the focus is no longer on you. Your focus is no longer on you. Your focus is no longer even on God. But here, your focus is from God. Now you become like God, not God, but you become like God. You, be, you begin to look at, at what he wants, and your focus is from God. This, this, and let, let me prove it to you. Inside of, inside of the Holy of Holies, on top of the uh, on top of the Ark of the Covenant, 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 uh, on top of the Ark of the Covenant, there was what's called the Mercy Seat, and on the Mercy Seat, uh, there were angels, golden angels, on there that uh, that had their wings spread out to show a back and a seat that uh, that you could sit down, kind of like a chair, right? This was uh, considered the throne of God, and that chair was facing outward. So when you sat on that, you were turning around, you were facing this way. Oh. That's good. Uh, are, are you hearing this thing? So so when when our focus is on me, when my focus is on me, 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 I'm that just proves I'm in the outer court. That doesn't mean I'm not saved. That just means I'm in the outer court. I'm still focused on me. I'm still tripping on me. When I'm wondering about, you know, your rights, my rights, um, you know, I, I, I have a right to this, I have a right to that. Um, yeah, well, okay, well, whatever. Um, you're still focused on you're still focused on you, and and that's out of court thing. Mm -hmm. You have to get inside where the priests are, inside the holy, inside the holy place. To begin to get the revelation from God, to begin because that's where the revelation comes from. Outside in the in the in the courtyard, um, I put that away too soon, didn't I? Outside in the courtyard, there was uh, the only revelation out here. The only light out here is natural light. Let me say that again: the light out here is natural light, brain power light. The light inside here is Holy Spirit light. It only comes from this light inside here. It only comes from the north. Oh, what? Wow. It only comes, you, there's no other light inside there. Out here is all natural. So when your thinking is natural, when your thinking is, you know, is, is about me, how can we get this better? How can I make that? God, tell me what your will for my life is so that I can prepare myself for this will that you have for me. No, God, he's pretty good at preparing you for his will. He, he, he's real good at it. Uh, amen. Matter of fact, he got it all <laughs> planned out. he's got it all planned out exactly That's how he's right. going to prepare you for what you don't have to, you don't have to help. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. He knows exactly what to do. He's had it planned out since before the foundation of the world. He, he, amen. When you come into this place called intercession, when you come into the cluster, you come into this place called intercession, now your focus is not on you anymore. Intercession isn't about you. 
on we go to prayer on Friday night is is not about us. That's Sometimes right. people come in and they need a prayer. I, I don't have a problem with praying for them. Let's pray for them. Let's intercede first, and then we'll pray for them afterwards. Um, a, amen. So, so, a, amen. But intercession is when you pray for others. Jesus ain't praying for himself. He's interceding on your behalf. Holy Ghost ain't praying for himself. He's already saved. Jesus is already at the right hand of the Father. He don't need no help. Holy Ghost don't need no help. We're the ones that need help. Amen? We're the ones that need the help. We're the ones, and they're interceding on our behalf. So we have to come in and begin to join their intercession on the behalf of the church, on the behalf of the neighborhood, on the behalf of whatever the, the Lord puts on our heart to, to, to intercede about. Amen. Because we have to come into the Holy of Holies and get the mind of God and then focus on what he's given us the mind of to intercede for that. And out of that selfless intercession, your calling will be made clear. The Bible says to make your calling and election sure. Your calling will be made clear out of your own selfless, selfless, not selfish, selfless intercession. So Friday night, 7.30. Uh, amen. Amen. So that's a shameless plug, right? But it's 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 absolutely true. And I, I'm just trying to help. Amen. amen. Help us. Help us. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. So here I we are. Sometimes. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I'll write a note so I can remember what I was going to say. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I like I like that what you said selfless intercession. Yeah, intercession not, is not it, about us. Not, it's not about us. We're praying right. for others. Correct. That's what intercession is all others. about. Yes. Intercession so through intercession isn't even making a list of things that you know need to be prayed about. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not even praying about what we want to pray about for other people. Right. Yeah. True intercession uh, is standing in the gap for another. Right. And, and the church has messed this up for centuries. Okay. And and the church has come in with a carnality, with the carnal mind, to stand in the gap for their friend, to stand in the gap for their pastor, to stand in the gap for for another for another person. But that's not what true intercession is about. What is holy? What is Holy Spirit? His His intercession is not standing in the gap for us, but is standing in the gap for God through us. Jesus Ooh. is standing in the gap for God through us. God sent Him into the world to save us, so that so that we could so that we could spend spend with Him an eternity. Are you hearing this thing? So Jesus is interceding God's will on behalf of God. Us word. That's good. That's what intercession is. We're not standing in the gap of Fred. We're not standing in the gap of Wilma or Barney. Um, thank you, Flintstones. Uh, we're we're standing in the gap for God. Who's not here to pray their will in this place? It well, God is here, but he doesn't have a, a human voice to pray his will, so we're standing in the gap for him. Why does he need us to stand in the gap for him? Because we are made in in in, in the flesh. His we're image. Born of water. We're born of water and we're born of the spirit. And we have the authority in the earth realm because we have these earth suits, because we have this physical body. Mm -hmm. Oh, why do you think the enemy comes after you and he wants to use your mouth? He wants to use your mind. He wants to get your thinking wrong so you'll be doing wrong, you'll be saying wrong, because it's your you have the authority. Mm. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it, it says, it says, we'll make man in our image and give him authority. He can have authority over all these things. Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Some of you don't believe me. I don't know it says that in Genesis chapter 1. Um, verse 26. 126. It, says, it, it says, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. 
and let them, what? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's five things. One, count them, one, two, three, five. Amen. He said, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over, over creation. So God needs you to speak into the, he can intervene. Don't misunderstand. He, he's God. He can do what he wants to do. But to, to maintain his own, his own dominion flow and to keep the devil at bay, we need to step up in there and actually begin to speak on behalf of God. Actually begin yes. to speak on behalf of God. We don't want to hear this part. We want to hear that, you know, that uh, we just sit back and wait for God to do everything. No, he's, he's calling on us to do some stuff. He's doing his own, but, you know, he's doing his own, but he's still calling on us too. Does it make it sense to anybody? I know it makes sense to me, but then yeah. that's to me. So you know, because the doctor said I don't have to go back there anymore. As long as I take my medicine and I don't hurt anyone. Again. It says a golden altar was to be four square. In other words, to be square, just like the brazen altar in the holy place. Um was just like the brazen altar and the holy place. Uh, both were four square. So the holy place, the brazen altar, and the golden altar were all four square. They were all square. It's equal sides, right? And, uh, and this speaks of the four square city of God, talked about in Revelation 21 and 22. This is the new Jerusalem. Revel chapters, read the chapters, 21 and chapter 22. It talks about the new Jerusalem, which was a square that came down to sit on the to sit on the Mount of God, Amen. So the 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 holy place is a square. It's ten by ten by twenty, Amen. Um, the altar of incense was a square. It's one cubit by one cubit. It's a square. The brazen altar was a square. I forget the measurements, but it was a square, uh, Amen. Um, and this speaks of that holy that holy city of God. Right, so four. Let's get into there. Four is significant as the number of the whole earth. Talk about the four corners, four corners of the earth. We are told to preach the gospel of the kingdom unto yes. the whole earth, the four corners of the earth. This is a message that is to be worldwide in its effect. It doesn't just have effect in America. It doesn't just have effect in 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 your home country. It has effect. Everywhere in the world. It doesn't just have effect amongst your friends. It doesn't just have effect in, in, in Sacramento. It doesn't just have effect in, in Monterey. It doesn't just have effect in San Jose. It has an effect on the whole world. Mm -hmm. The whole world. Well, yes. That's good. Amen. The whole and, world. And that's why, and that's why it there's four the four corners, there's four squares. Amen. Let's Amen. Keep, Amen. Let's keep going. We might actually finish something. No, we, we won't. We got two minutes. We won't finish nothing. But we'll get a little bit further. How's that sound? Amen. It Amen. says, uh, uh, we see the power of Christ's prayer and intercession uh, reaches the whole earth. To the four corners. So God, so Jesus is standing at the right hand of God. Get a picture of this. Jesus is, is excuse me, seated at the right hand of God. And he's and he's making intercession for you and I, not only you and I, but everybody else mm -hmm. over the whole earth. So his intercession reaches the whole earth to the four corners. Even so, the prayer of the saints are to ascend to heaven. From the four corners of the earth. Prayer is not something that is only for the select of the elect, but it is to be worldwide. Prayer isn't just for the leadership. Prayer isn't just for the few. Prayer isn't just for those people that 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 understand their call as an intercessor. Prayer is for everybody. Prayer is for 
everyone. Amen. Prayer Amen. is for the whole, the whole body. Amen. That's good. Amen. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to see what is that next one. Yeah, we're going to get into the horns next. So, so let's. Uh, I guess we'll call it there. Amen. Um, amen. So prayer intercession. We we need to have a prayer life. Jesus said that that uh, many will come to me in that day, and I will tell them, "Depart from me, for I never knew you." And we'll say, "But Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we, you know, didn't we preach in your name? Didn't we do all these wonderful works in your name?" And He says, "I never knew you." So a lot of us, we don't have this prayer life. You know, you can you can be a you can preach at the at the at the pulpit, um, and not have a prayer life. Right. You can come into an understanding. You can get educated and know the Bible and not have a prayer life. That's right. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't. You can cast out devils and not have a prayer life. Why? Because this is done in the name of Jesus and his authority. I've told you this before. Jesus already defeated the enemy. He already defeated the enemy. It's our job to kind of clean up the mess now because he's already been defeated. Now we just kind of go out and say, oh, you're defeated. Get out of here. Oh, devil, you're defeated. You got to come out of this guy. Oh, sickness, you've been defeated. You got to go. Amen. It's not that we're doing anything. He already did it. We're just, we're just kind of cleaning up the, you know, cleaning up the litter after the parade. Um, amen. You ever watch those uh, litter pickers? Um, after a parade goes by, there's a whole other parade of people cleaning up, you know, scooping up the horse stew and, you know, all that fun stuff. There's a, there's a whole other parade. We're just the litter, litter picker uppers. Um, amen. Good. Hallelujah. Amen. So, any questions? Pastor Jerry, can you uh, let me see where was you talking? Can you go back to when you were uh, when you were talking about the uh, about the prayer about Jesus uh, being at the right hand of the Father and uh, ex uh, explain that again? Well, you say He's at the right hand of the Father, making intercession, but He's also using us. Is that when? What I'm trying to get to is when we're sitting with him in that heavenly place. So as he's interceding, we're interceding with him. Okay, so he's seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible's clear on that, that he's seated on the right hand of the Father, and he ever makes intercession for us. Right. So what he's doing is he's praying God's will for us, the intercession for us, uh -huh. of God. To us. A amen. Now, once we mature, we're seated in him. Uh, I shouldn't say it that way. We're seated in him the whole time, but we don't always understand it. We don't always um, receive that or accept that. Um, but we're seated in him so that we can pray from God to the issue. Amen. So, amen. Remember, I told you that in the that in the in the tabernacle. In the outer court, uh, your focus is on you. My focus is on mm -hmm. me. Outer court is a me, me thing. Okay. Then we go into the holy place and our focus is on God. Amen. Receiving his revelation, the communion, uh, a amen, and, and the, the altar, of the, the prayer, the altar of incense. When we go into the holy of holies, our, our focus is not on God. It's from God. So now we have the mind of God. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. Now we have the mind of God, and our focus is from God onto what He's focused on. Are, are, are you hearing me? And so once we once we come to this place where we understand who we are, not everybody, not even every leader understands who they are. But once we come to this place where we understand who we are, now we can now we're we're in Christ, and we can focus not on us. Not on, not even on him, but on, but from him, with his mind, it, 
A amen. So his his will is that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. His will is that none should perish. His will is that, that sin be knocked out. His will is that is that sickness be, be done. Uh, amen. So now we can come with that mind from where he's at. Uh, amen. And, and begin to operate as as he would operate in this world. Amen. Because we have the same mind. Mm -hmm. that, that answers your question? I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. It kind of when you were talking, I thought about uh that scripture in John 15, 7, where it talks yeah. about if we abide in him and his word abides in us, we can ask whatever uh he will and it will be done for us but we have to abide in him and in his word so and when he we, abided in us and he abided us so when when we have that connection the, his will begins to come forth right with per, his will what he wants right now you begin to you begin to pray from him pray you begin from to him. pray from you you begin to look at things from his perspective as opposed to from your perspective. You now have a heavenly perspective as opposed to an earthly carnal perspective. Uh-huh. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Because you're in him and he's in you. Mm-hmm. And it's a place we can live. We don't we don't have to just kind of visit there from time to time. We can actually live in the Holy of Holies. We can actually live in that place. And still operate at work, still go to work, still do your job. Um, still raise your family, still, you know, do whatever you got to do. You can operate in this place called the Holy of Holies. It's not some okay. mystical, it's not some mystical, mythical place that, uh, you know, you, you have to right. be no earthly good. I've heard some people say that, you know, you be so spiritual, you're no earthly good. But I, I disagree with that. You can't be too spiritual that you're no earthly good um, in, unless, you know, Unless you're spiritual, not in Christ. Amen. So you have dual, we have dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. Some people say that. Some people say that. I don't. I don't really agree with that. I saw the so. We we have we have citizenship in heaven. Okay. We're sojourners here. We're visitors. Oh, got you. Amen. Amen. Um. It's like people that say, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, that that they're dual natures. Okay, you have the old nature in you, and then you have this new nature. I don't agree with that either. Yeah, because the Bible, yeah. Any yeah, man being Christ, he a new creature. He's a new creature, right? All things have passed away. All things have become new. Come on, come on. So, so we we don't have a dual nature in us. That would make us schizophrenic. And God wants us to be like him, and he's not schizophrenic. Amen. Mm -hmm. He gave us our nature. He gave us He gave us his nature, rather. Uh, amen. When we got born again, he, he put his nature in us. Now we have the ability to be like him because his mm -hmm. nature is in us. Now we're, excuse me, that was the wrong way to put that. We, we actually are like him because his nature is in us. Problem. Um, that we call a dual nature is we still have memories of our old nature. We still have memories of how responding to situations in the flesh kind of felt good. Are, 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 are you following me? We, we still have, you know, they, they made me happy. They, you know, amen. So, so, you know, when, when, when this happened, I would do this and the problem will be solved. Uh, amen. So we still have this memory of the way we did things in the old nature, but we have this new nature. So, so when when you have that new nature, now now you begin to have a you begin to have a battle inside of you. Um, at least I did. I, I can't speak to nobody else. I did. When I got saved, I was I was man. I was dual. I was. A, I had an angel on one shoulder, devil on the other one. You know, like the old cartoons, right? Um, I was torn. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't double minded until I got saved. Uh, amen. But when I got saved now, now with this new nature and these old memories, uh, you know, well, this was I wasn't a bad person. I did some bad things. But I wasn't a bad person. So, you know, I, I would I would kind of look at these memories and, and begin to walk down that path again. Um, amen. And uh, a lot of people call that a dual nature. And I'm, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, 
Uh, mm-hmm. People smarter than me uh, call it a dual nature, but I'm sorry. I just don't agree with it because, you know, God says I'm a new person. I'm a new creation. Mm-hmm. I'm not even human anymore. I'm, I'm a godly creation. Amen. And so are you. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, hallelujah. Good word. Amen. Any other questions? Before I stop this thing. I don't know what the recording is going to look like. I don't have my joining software anymore. All I do is on another computer, though, that I don't use. 